Welcome everyone. My name is Lynn Richmond. I'm the Communications and Public Affairs uh, Coordinator at the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. Joining to me today is Milford Wayne Donald Donaldson. He is the ACHP Chairman. Today we are at NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. We're here for the ribbon cutting of the Apollo Mission Control Center, a project that we have been following since the beginning and uh, played an extremely large role in getting the project coordinated. So, uh, Chairman Donaldson, tell me, how was the ACHP involved in this project? Well, we've been involved in the project for approximately five and a half years, so it's been a very long project. And we first got involved when we heard that NASA was going to demolish the Mission Control Center because it was sitting on top of the International Space Station control room and they were worried about the security. It had long been closed down since the Apollo mission uh, had ended. So they were anxious to reuse the room upstairs. Uh, so when we got involved, it became a Section 106 under the National Historic Preservation Act and I had to write a very stern letter uh, to move this along and make sure that NASA did the proper stuff on getting the, uh, the restoration correct. Uh, and we followed it all the way through. Every time it started to, to turn south on us, uh, we wrote some more letters on how important this mission control center was. The second item that we came up with, which was rather unique, is that under the revisions that came out in the 1980 National Historic Preservation Act, is we found that we as an agency, when we became independent during that time, that we could take private funds and pass those on to federal agencies like NASA because even though they have raised enough money for this, they could not pass through about $3.4 million in order to get the money to do the restoration. The entire restoration took about $5 million. Uh, so they had other grants from the National Park Service and stuff, but $3.4 million was sitting, they could not use it. And again, the project almost failed until we came through and uh, through a lot of hard work with staff especially uh, Javier Marquez and Chris Daniel in shepherding this project through. Oh, why, why was it important to preserve this particular historic site? Well, being sort of a, a, uh, a space and uh, star or sci-fi or scientific fiction or whatever you want to call it, uh, junkie since I grew up as a boy, I read more science fiction books than any other books, which I don't know how my their education or not, but to me, putting a man on another terrestrial body to, is probably the most scientific achievement that we've had on the 21st century. Now, some people may say the development of the atomic bomb to end the Second War because it took so many people, but this is three times more the effort, and, I've, and in terms of the cost, tremendous. We were consuming almost 20% of the gross national product when the space program was underway. And I think it gave birth to a new nation at that time, a more appreciation that we are Americans, that we can make this happen, trying to invent things that we didn't even know what to invent because we've never been there. And of course, a lot of the spin-off things that we had, <coughs> simple things like Velcro and these items came from this incredible project. But to me, with Kennedy's speech, it united the United States, which was going through a tremendous war in Vietnam, civil rights unrest and everything else, united us uh, in order to put man on the moon within a decade. So the actual Mission Control Center, we got to see it yesterday, up close and personal. What, what, how meaningful was that to you? And what uh, surprised you about it when you were there? Well, we had been at Mission Control Center over the years uh, before the restoration began, and it was very sad. Besides being worn and the, the council's changes and missing knobs, it became an area where people that were either involved in the program or were historians, believe it or not, were taking pieces. They were cutting squares out of the fabric, and this is not something that's new. I understand that even after Lincoln was shot, they were cutting pieces of his coat off to save his souvenirs, and people happen to do this. So 
We didn't really know whether it could be even restored back to its original 1960s glory because the period of significance was going to be for the Apollo program. In other words, those particular missions that actually went to the moon, went around them, and then with Apollo 11 actually landing on the moon and going up to Apollo 17. So those were the, the areas of significance, so we wanted to return it there, and lo and behold, found out that because of the people that worked there, this was really their, their alma mater, their high school, their, the thing that, that attracts them, because these people were all in their 20s and early 30s going through this, that they had saved a lot of this and took it home and everything else. So when we walked in there yesterday, I could not believe it. It looked just like the photographs. And thanks really to the perseverance of uh, Sandra Tetley, who is the uh, Johnson Space Center Preservation Officer, and Jean Krantz, who I became very good friends with over these years. Uh, and of course, most of you know Jean Krantz from, uh, if you didn't study the history or read the book, Failure is Not an Option from Apollo 13, bringing them home. But he was also the flight director uh, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin sat down on the moon. So. Uh, these people are now living. They're living legends. So they became really involved in that. In fact, we have some of their old coats that Sandra found that's on there. Uh, besides taking pictures, people brought back cups and coffee servers and all that. And then the neat thing is that Sandra's dad, who worked there, saved all of the mission control plans and the processes and everything and the books and the maps on the moon and saved all of those. So now those are all brought back. And like uh, Jean said, we wanted to restore this as though we just left the room and we were coming back and now you guys come in. So when you see the pictures and the restoration, and the nice thing is they didn't come back and paint the consoles and all that. They actually restored them by cleaning them and finding old knobs and finding stuff in the warehouse in order to restore it carpets were woven to match the original ones there and Sandra even saved a bag full of gum that was underneath the seats of the observation area for that so that it's just part of that unique history. Uh, talking with Jean, I think the only thing I'd like to see maybe is that you see in a lot of museums because now they're looking at it, this is really their first museum at, at Johnson Space Center uh, that really recaptures this moment is that he said you could always tell when we had an emergency online because nobody was allowed to re leave the room. So we had cigars, we had cigarettes, we had burnt coffee. He says uh, we had trash boxes full of, of what, old chicken wings and everything else. And that smell was so pungent is that when you walked in the room, you knew you had an emergency on. So uh, he says, but we can't really do that because I don't think most visitors would really like that smell. <laughs> But they did, uh, in fact, find original ashtrays and restored some, had some made. Uh, they restored all of the cigarettes that were actually in the room uh, uh, for the viewing room that were behind there because people sitting in the viewing room could also smoke cigarettes. So anyway, it was really uh, an incredible project. I think that NASA should be congratulated with this. I, I've seen some restorations that NASA has done, but being an architect, on this, I, I have never seen this level of detail and research uh, coming back to restore this to its uh, late 1960s glory. So you're about to participate in the grand opening ceremony, so I won't keep you, but thank you so much for talking to us today. Right. Chairman of the ACHP, Milford Wayne Donaldson, I'm Lynn Richmond. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.